Hey everyone, welcome to Money Wirework. Today we're going to be talking about the FOMC meeting that happened today, what the Fed did, and how markets reacted to that. So right off the bat, the Fed raised rates another 50 basis points. We're looking at about another 75 total for 2023. With that said, the Fed has stated and Jerome Powell has stated that they do not want to undershoot this, that they do not want to go dovish too early. So that can absolutely change. And keep in mind right now that the market is dependent on how the Fed is reacting to interest rates and whether or not the remaining steady going down or going back up but just because that's how the market is reacting right now does not mean that's how the market is going to react in the future there can be a time down the road that the market is reacting negatively to something else okay so just keep in mind that just because interest rates were getting near the end of raising them does not necessarily mean that we're going to go straight into a bull market okay so always keep in mind that the market can stay irrational as long as or even longer than you can stay solvent okay so you always have to adjust accordingly have a clear plan and with that said let's get right into how the market is reacting and i'm gonna show you something really interesting and as far as Heikinashi candles um, and how important they are and how great they can be as a tool but at the same time how deceiving they can actually be as well okay so let's just get into this market right now this is the s p 500 i have the sma line green right here that is the 50 sma line with the biorgum um, ema cloud and then i just drew these trend channels here and then i have support and resistance uh, as an indicator right here, which I really saw, started to love and use. Um, we have the TSI right down here, um, kind of acts similar to an RSI. I have the RSI below it because I love how I can see how the RSI reacts to a moving average and seeing whether or not it's using that as support or using it as resistance. So just right off the bat, we have this larger trend line going down here that started way back in 2021, December 30th, 2021. Uh, so basically the beginning of 2022 for the most part. I mean, you might as well be able to draw it up as January 1st if you wanted to. Um, and we have these lows and highs going up, down, up, down, and then up again. Now, we, just to reference how we've called these moves in the past, because we like to call out our right moves and our wrong moves. The right move we called was this right here. We said it was going to come up. We called it right back around here. It did go up. Then we did call this down just because of these two previous resistances. And then we did call this, uh, I believe it was in our previous video or two videos ago, we called this uptrend and we talked about how you can make money in the short term uh, even though the stock market overall is bearish, uh, you can have SQQ open and then open up some TQQQ as you go on the way up. Now, as far as technical analysis is concerned, everyone and their mother is talking about this long trend line down and how this is such a huge resistance. Now, the more obvious it is, the more retail is going to act accordingly. Um, and you know institutions are likely to follow as well with that said the market can do anything it wants whatever it wants for whatever reason it wants and it can stay irrational longer than you can stay solvent okay so keep that in mind as of right now though I entered a short position uh, starting today actually I had a short position up here actually I did sell it if we were to get closer I did sell it on this day right here what is it uh the 12th so a couple days ago just because i didn't want an open position during the fed meeting i you know you're gonna get burned if you do that enough times so even though i had sqq open i just wanted to close it because i do want to play this long trend channel or this long reversal back down but i wanted to see what the Fed had to say, if they were gonna come out and say something crazy, they were gonna do some 25 basis points. I wanted to be prepared for that. So right now I entered a short on SPY and I entered a position on SQQQ and I might add as it continues to go. Um, keep in mind too, I'm a big fan of the 
uh, credit spreads um, where you can essentially stock go sideways, indices go sideways, you can still make a good amount of money. So that's something to keep in, in mind right now, okay? So if you look closer, now one thing that you can see here on the TSI is we have a bearish divergence. So what does that mean? Well, that means that we have a higher high and a higher high here. But if you look, we have a, and even even that's even bearish though. That did not quite make it up there. Um, so we have bearish here in the sense on the TSI where we're going down, our hires, hires are getting lower. Now right here, we do have a bearish divergence actually, because look, high right here, on the looks like the first we have a higher high right here on the 13th but if you look at the tsi and the rsi you have a high right here and then you have a lower high right here so that's indicating a uh, bearish divergence and that is an indication to go short okay um, you can also see if we just move myself a little bit and we pull up we expand the RSI and this is why I love using the RSI right here because we see a resistance right here and now we can just act okay support support came down looked like it might have reversed but then came back to a higher high still acting at support now we came down there's a lower high as we acted as resistance okay so i'm looking to go short i like my short positions i like where they're at um i was patient on them i opened them today and we'll see where it goes everything can change as quick as they come okay so if we just bring up some other uh some other tickers right now we we'll go to Tesla. <clears throat> uh, this stock has taken a beating, a huge beating in the past. Oh my gosh! Since we're looking at, I mean, this was a this is a good up uh, uptrend. So we'll start right here. I mean, since April of 2020, this thing has just been bleeding. Now this is a great stock. It's got a bright future. I really like it, but it's a little pricey for what I'm looking at. Uh, both long term and as far as technical analysis is concerned, I don't see an uptrend on this yet. Okay, so we do if we're looking at our support levels, we got a little bit of support level here. If I bring myself back down, we have a support level right here at 157. So we might see a little bit of a bounce. But uh, as far as our price target, we're looking at 126. And then we'll see what happens there. You can also maybe draw a trend line from, you know, 210 to 155, but that's sort of contradicting what we got on this larger trend line. This is such a wide trend channel though that it's kind of hard to depict what you're looking at. So, you know, I guess we can just do this here. You know, if you look at something like that. But really when the on these wide trend channels, you want to look at on these wide trend channels like this, what you want to really do is look at something like this and just wait for it to break. So we draw this here roughly and let's just zoom a little bit. So what we're looking at is this could it's kind of forming a wedge. This could break out. And if it breaks out off of this bounce, then yeah, maybe you play it up to 261. Uh, if it breaks down, that's where you're looking at this lower low right here at 126. If we go to Meta next, Facebook, Meta Platforms, taking a huge beating right now because they are spending their pants on the metaverse, okay? I mean, they even changed their name to Meta for crying out loud, all right? So I don't have any trend channels drawn up right now, but if you look at this 50 moving average it has not broken it yet um if you go out maybe to the weekly here go out to the weekly i mean there is no sign of a reversal right now however if you're a long-term investor this they've got them out they're trying to kick butt as far as the metaverse get that going they're trying to they're trying to be the first and the only one and the best and the biggest in that space they're they really believe in it it's potentially make or break for them who knows if you are a long-term investor, Meta might be something you should be interested in if you're looking at long-term. As far as the technical analysis, it has just been rocked lately. And there's a little bit of an uptrend right here just as the market overall started to come back. But and if anything, I mean, TSI is a little low to go short. But if anything, this is going lower. Now, the last thing I wanted to talk about is what I said before with the Heikinashi candles and why you have to just be careful with them. So let's bring up the Heikinashi candles. It's just important to keep in mind the Heikinashi candles are a tool and they are not the end all be all. So let's show you here. 
the Heikarashi candles on the daily. Now, let's just hide this drawing for a second. Now, just pretend today didn't happen, okay? And you see this green candle. You have TSI and, and RSI are a little high, and the TSI is showing red. So these are indications that there actually might be a downturn. But if you were to just play the Heikinashi candles and the simple moving average and not have an oscillator, you're looking at a big green candle bounce off of the SMA line and you don't see a potential resistance until 417, bigger resistance maybe at 431. And you're looking great, let's go green, right? Let's go, let's go bullish. However, change it to the regular candles. And what you actually see, is a huge, huge, basically knock off of this resistance and a, uh, you know, a rejection off of this resistance right here. And if you're looking at the trend overall, bring that back up. It's just, it just hit this, this trend channel and just bounce right off. And now we're, at least that was the right now we're going down. So I love Heikinashi candles. They're one of my favorite tools but be careful with them. And that is just a lesson basically for any tool that you're using. They're just indicators. They're not end all be all, okay? So use your experience, look at macroeconomic trends, play it safe. As I've said before, have tight stop losses and you'll do just fine in this market. Practice, practice, practice. Do not be afraid to pay for trade. With that said, thank you for watching. Thank you for over 100 subscribers. We're up to 115 now. I love it. I would have loved to uh, talk about that as we hit 100, but unfortunately my, uh, my camera battery died and I had to wait for a new one to come. Um, through Amazon. So maybe we'll look at Amazon stock next, but I appreciate it. I love all the subscribers. Please, if you like my content, subscribe, like, hit the notification bell so you see all my latest content. We got a lot more coming down the road as far as uh, deep dives into trading indicators, um, property management, real estate investing, all the likes. So thank you. We'll see you next time.